when you are developing a new technique for measuring something, uh, sometimes there are already, many a times in fact, there are already other techniques out there that have already been very well studied and well established as valid measurements of that construct. Uh, now, if, if that's the case, you might ask, why do we need a new technique if there's already valid measurements out there? And there are a lot of different reasons. Um, one off the top of my head would be if you have a very long, uh, tedious, or expensive way of measuring something, uh, then you might be trying to come up with a faster, shorter, or less expensive way of measuring the same thing. For example, if you have a really long questionnaire that's 50 questions and it really measures uh, anxiety very well, uh, but it's really kind of tedious for people to take this questionnaire and some people won't even do it because it's so long, well, you might be wondering, can we come up with just a few questions that could measure depression almost as well as this longer scale? Or you might have um, a, a technique of looking at... Um, behaviors, uh, you know, observing, observing behaviors as a way of measuring uh, the presence of a construct. And so behavioral observation can be time consuming and expensive. You might have to pay uh, expert uh, observe, you know, judges uh, to go out there and do these observations and record their data. Um, these could be, for example, clinical psychologists that have to be highly trained in diagnosing an individual's uh, mental illness or other psychological condition based on the behaviors that they exhibit. That could be very time-consuming and expensive. So there's lots of reasons why uh, you might want to come up with a new uh, measurement that measures the same thing as something that's already available. When you do this, uh, it makes sense to check if the new test is measuring the same thing as the old one, if, if, the, if the results it's giving agree with the results of the older, more established test. And that is the idea behind what we call concurrent, concurrent validity. Concurrent meaning happening at the same time. At the same time. And the reason is because you, the idea is you're going to give two different measurements to someone at the same time. So let's give our sort of official definition here. I hope you can already see where this is going. But the idea is that scores, if something has concurrent validity, what we're saying is that the scores from this new thing we're developing from, from a new measure agree agree with scores from a well established measure and of course uh, these are right these are the well established measure and the um, and the new measure are are measuring the same thing so these are measurements of the same construct. Hopefully that goes without saying, but I want to make sure I'm not being confusing. Um, and uh, uh, so we're saying scores from a new measure agree with scores from a well-established measure uh, uh, that is, whoops, is given at the same time. And that's why we call it concurrent validity. Uh, now, I say the same time. Um, this is not always exactly the same time. Sometimes it's not. You can't, for example, have two people, uh, or uh, sorry, you can't have a person take two different questionnaires at exactly the same time. They can't write and answer the questions on both questionnaires with two hands. Maybe you could intersperse the questions, um, but that's not necessarily exactly what you want to do anyway. So you might just give them uh, somewhat separated in time, but uh, but you're but you're giving them at about the same time. You are you are measuring something uh, with two different the same thing with two different tests concurrently. Now there's there's a phrase here I used I said uh, that I want to make sure to be clear about. I said scores from a new measure agree with scores from a well-established measure. 
What I mean is if someone got high scores on the one, they got high scores on the other. If they got low scores on the one, they got low scores on the other. In other words, what we're seeing with this is we're seeing there, there is a consistent relationship between the two sets of scores. And hopefully you've seen this in statistics class, but we can graph this, right? We can graph this using what's called a scatter plot. And with a scatter plot, we're going to put some dots on the graph, and each point is equal to two different scores. It represents two scores. So, and again, hopefully this is stuff you've seen before, but if not, I want to just make sure not to leave any details out. Let's say, um, let's say that we were measuring, uh, we have a new measurement uh, approach for measuring IQ, or not IQ, but, but intelligence. So we'll call it the, the new intelligence test, or abbreviated NIT, the NIT test. I'm totally making this stuff up as I go along. Um, and we're going to uh, try to validate that by, by using concurrent validity, show that it has concurrent validity by also giving the people an IQ test. Since the IQ test is a widely validated test of intelligence, yes, there's debate over it, but we're just trying to say, okay, is this also measuring the same thing as IQ? So we have a shorter, basically, shorter IQ test. It's a new test. We want to, you know, I think it'll be uh, easier for people to, to, to get through. I mean, at least faster, not easier in the sense of being less challenging, but it's going to measure the same thing. So we've got this new test that should be measuring the same construct. If someone, and, and let's say that down here is zero, a score of zero, and up here is something like a score of 150, which would be a very high IQ, and... Uh, the new intelligence test, let's say it doesn't go from zero to 150 or 200, um, but it goes from zero to say 15. We'll keep the numbers similar, but this has fewer questions on it, let's say. So let's say that the person scores um, a medium you know, IQ, they score here, let's say this is 100. Well, if they get an IQ score of 100, then, um, let's put that on there, 100, then if the new intelligence test, the NIT test, is, um, is measuring the same thing, then they should get also a high score there. So they get a high score on their IQ test, they get a high score on the new intelligence test, right? We plot this on a scatter plot by going out and seeing where these two lines converge, and we put a point there to show both a score of 100 and a score of 10. So again, if we have concurrent validity, what we're saying is that there is a there is a consistent relationship, which means that if a person gets a higher IQ, they should get a higher NIT. Uh, so if they get a lower IQ, if they get something down here, right, then they should also get something low on the other score, right? And as we plot the points, the data points for people who took this test, we would expect them to follow along essentially some kind of a line here, a straight line. This is a perfectly consistent relationship, which we would not expect. We would actually expect some of these dots to be a little bit different because we don't expect our test to be absolutely perfect like this. Um, but we should expect to see some amount of agreement, a consistent relationship, meaning higher scores on the IQ are consistently related to higher scores on the NIT. That's concurrent validity, and that is an indicator that we're measuring the same thing. Now, I say that it's an indicator we're measuring the same thing. It doesn't absolutely prove we're measuring the same thing because we often find relationships between different constructs. So the book gives a very clean, simple example of this. If we are measuring something, and I'll do another scatter plot over here, if we are measuring something like like height and we also measure weight, we would expect if somebody is very short, in general, on average, they're going to have a low, if they're short in height, they're also going to have a low weight. If they're tall, they're also going to have, right, they're also going to have a, uh, be, be heavier. So we would expect there to be some consistency in the measurement 
of height and weight, uh, what this means is that you could be measuring two very different constructs and you could seem to have concurrent validity. So concurrent validity by itself is an indicator. It's a good thing to find. It's an indicator that you have construct validity, that you're measuring what you mean to be measuring. But it's not enough by itself. So you would want to go ahead and do uh, look into other indicators of construct validity to make sure that you're really measuring what you are intending to measure.